What's up Dirt Tracks Nation? Luke here bringing you guys another walk around video. This is on a vehicle that we just, just, just got in. This thing's brand new. It doesn't even have a speck of dust on it. This is a CF Moto Z Force 950 Sport. Now it might look pretty similar to another vehicle we did not that long ago, the 800 Trail model. The bodywork is all the same, but this is the 950 Sport version, so it is different. Before I go any further though, uh, if you guys haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. We've got lots of new content coming day in, day out. And uh, make sure you get that like button pushed if you like this video. If you don't like this video, just leave us some constructive criticism and suggestions and we'll see what we can do. And of course, put the bell on so you don't miss any of our videos as they immediately come out, you'll be immediately notified. So make sure you do those three, three things. We really appreciate it. But on to the CF Moto Z Force 950 Sport. Now, the old 950, it's still around. The 950 HO, it's still around. Uh, it's the weird looking one with no like no box on the back and the little rocket jet booster things for air filters. That's still around. But this is the one that I think I'd buy. And not think, I would buy this one. This is a great side by side. So let's talk a little bit about the specs. The sport model differs from the trail model in that, in that this is 60 inches wide. Now, I do have to point out there is a 950 trail. The 800 trail we tested was just the base model. There is a 950 trail, so it's not like you have to get... Uh, the, the 950, you have to get the Sport to move up to it, you don't. Um, but we tested the 800, this is the 950 Sport. This is 60 inches wide, it has 12 inches of suspension travel in the front, 12 and a half in the back. It's riding on 27 inch stag tires on 14 inch aluminum wheels that are really nice looking wheels. It comes equipped just like you see it, except for the windshield and the rear, the rear screen. Those are the only two things on this vehicle that are not stock, that are that are um, accessory upgrades, just so you're aware. And, and it actually comes extremely well equipped. So it's a 950 twin, the twin. It's actually see, 963 cc. So it's actually more than a 950. I would love to tell you what the horsepower is, but I haven't been able to get a hold of anybody to find out what it what they claim it is just yet. We will be doing a full test ride on this, so you'll get that number during the test ride. So yeah, it's a 950, 963 though. Um, so I gotta think it's making somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 horsepower, maybe just a little less, but pretty close to that would be my assumption. Now, as we walk around the vehicle, you'll notice it comes with a 3,500 pound winch, comes that way, does have a steel cable, but it's still included. Uh, winch controllers up underneath the, the storage compartment in front of the steering wheel, so that's pretty cool. I really like this little aluminum, deflector thing here. It has no real purpose other than to look cool, but it definitely does look cool and I like it. This bumper is standard and it is actually pretty cool how it's integrated into the vehicle. I like how it goes in behind the fenders here. Um, it just looks really, really well integrated. And I think it would definitely protect your headlights and you're probably gonna need that because those are some nice looking headlights in there and you don't wanna smash them up. Suspension wise, as I mentioned, 12 inches of suspension travel up front. You can't see it here, but it does have uh, piggyback shocks and they have four position compression clickers. Uh, we'll, you'll see it better on the rear shocks because they're the same front and rear. Um, but one thing you'll notice here is that this has a progressive spring. So you can see the spring coils are a little wider here and a little uh, more narrow at the front, uh, or at the top, sorry. That's a multi-rate spring, and that's pretty neat. That's something that usually people do or com companies do, Polaris does on razors and stuff with multiple springs. Um, they've incorporated it into one coil spring. But what that does is give you that really plush ride on the initial sort of chatter bumps and stuff. But then when you compress the suspension further, it, it gives you more uh, support. So that's pretty nice that you do that on a vehicle like this. You know, it's something that not a lot of people are doing and I like to see that. So as I mentioned before, you've got these extended mud guards. The uh, 50 inch model does not come with these. The 60 inch model does. Uh, and they actually sort of stick just within the tire. So the tires do stick out a little bit further than the mud guards. Haven't tested them to see how protective they are, but I know that on the 50 inch model, this vehicle was very clean to drive and I like a clean vehicle to drive. So that's that. Um, you do have uh, CV tech clutches as all CF motos do. That's a really important uh, specification because CV tech makes super high end clutches. So you're not, you're not getting a transmission in this vehicle that's subpar, it is top of the line transmission. It does have adaptive EPS, meaning it's speed sensitive. That's what adaptive means. It is not tri-mode as far as I can tell. Uh, it doesn't say anywhere that it is and I haven't been able to find any settings on the gauge that would allow me to do that. So I think it is just single mode adaptive EPS. You've got these great doors. These are, these are called half doors. Well, CF Moto calls them half doors. What's funny is that a half door from so many other companies leaves the bottom open and they'll call those a half door. This is a true half door in my opinion. I like that the handle is where a handle would be on a normal car door and the door does open forwards. Um, now it opens 
probably could open a little further in my opinion that's one of the downsides to this design is it doesn't really go far enough but i do like that it opens standard it makes it easier to get in from this direction um it just makes entrance and well what do you call it ingress and egress into the vehicle to get technical so much easier i think uh there are certainly situations where a door that opens the other way is going to be beneficial obviously there's positives and negatives but i think the positives outweigh the negatives with this type of door design it is also you can just see here weather sealed the whole way around all the way up from here to here is weather sealed and it does seal up pretty good you can see the seal starting all the way down here and running all the way around so you're going to get really good um water protection now it's not going to be waterproof but it's going to help keep water out when you go into deep water and that's really really nice i think that's something that uh that sets a door apart really is when it can seal tight enough that it will help out keep out the elements when you're driving through deep deep stuff the inside of the door is also finished which is really nice the door handle on the inside is forward where it should be as well so it's easy to reach when you want to get in and out and the door closes nice and tight no rattle it's a, it's a very nicely finished door setup i talk a lot about doors because a door is a thing that either is good or it sucks and this one's really good the one thing i will say though is that there's no armrest on the door that's a small point that's something that isn't really that big a deal um, but some vehicles do have a little shelf for your elbow if that's how you like to drive this does not have that i'm willing to trade that for a nicely finished door like this one one that closes tight so i'm not going to complain about it now you do have uh the roll cage um is that sort of inset design and this is something polaris started and pretty much everybody else has copied but you can see here that the windshield sits inside the roll cage not in not on top of it this channel here allows for that if you had a full windshield it would sit flush which is cool and then on the sides here if you did have like a door extension uh, that went up to the top it would sit flush within the within the um, roll cage as well which is a, a really nice feature it's, it's more stylistic than anything else but when you do have a vehicle that you're paying a lot of money for those little, those little uh, details really matter. The mirrors are standard. These are actually pretty decent mirrors. They have detents in them so they can fold. Uh, the detents are really strong so when you're ripping down the road, which I have done on this so far, um, the mirrors don't flop around. They're pretty standard, but if you were to hit a tree, they can flop out of the way or tree branch or whatever and, uh, and not get damaged. That's cool. And again, they are standard. The roof is standard. Um, and the thing I like about this roof, a couple things. Now this seems like such a small point, like such a, oh, I guess we should probably do that, but some companies don't. It has a really deep rain channel that goes right out to here and runs, any water, if it's raining, is going to run down here and then come off the side. Now I will say this rain channel, if you draw a straight line, goes right down into the, into the interior of the vehicle. This being extended out a little more might look funny, but it would keep the rain off of your right leg as the passenger uh, and your, your left leg as the driver. But it is nice that it has this because some don't. And what that means is all the rain just drips on your dash and on your knees and on your legs. So it's such a small thing, but CF Moto has it figured out and it's really deep. It's a good one. So that's, that's good. I also like the stylized design at the back here. This isn't just a flat roof that sits on top. This is a, like a molded roof and it's got this cool wing on the back. I think it looks really neat and, uh, and just adds to the style and style is important. Um, your air intakes are up here. Uh, so really high up like by your shoulders, uh, for your CVT and your engine, one on each side. And that's great because you can put water basically up to here without flooding the engine or the CVT. And, uh, actually this year I flooded a Polaris because I had the water up to here and, and it got flooded. So this is actually really, really nice. And I think it would work. It's obviously got that sort of frog skin though. It's not, um, material in here to keep the dust out um, now moving on to the back obviously you've got your molded mud guards again um, they look good they integrate into the vehicle really well and they help keep the mud off uh, your 27 inch tires but this is what's needed the back here this cargo cover is standard on this model and it almost turns it into kind of like an SUV, I guess, in a way. But these latches here are really slick the way they work. They don't work like a normal, this isn't rubber. This is plastic with a little spring thing inside here. So you just pull it open. When you want to close it, you just close it. Um, but when you open it up, this is weather sealed and it is bolted to the top of the box. This isn't just like strapped in, it's actually bolted right onto the box. So it's sealed and this is sealed. You got tie down areas in here you can hold 330 pounds of material in here, whatever you need gear, and you got some tie down areas, but then the lid seals down nice and tight and keeps your stuff dry. Now that is gonna limit putting tall stuff in the back of your side by side, but 
I mean, realistically, when you're out riding, I don't see a lot of people with real tall stuff in the back of their side by side. You're going to put a cooler, which will fit in here. You're going to put some supplies, maybe some tools, whatever. Uh, if you're going overnight, you have a tent and some sleeping bags. All of that will fit in here, no problem. So this is a really nice feature. I imagine it's a very expensive feature as well that's included with this model. And it's pretty cool. Nobody else is doing that from the factory. Now around the back, um, a couple other things CF Moto does with this model that I really like is you've got a really nice looking center exit exhaust. It's a large exit. It looks tough. Look, gives a stainless look. It says CF Moto on it. I think that's really, really cool. It's super high end looking. Something that a lot of other companies honestly just fail on. And then you've got a two inch hitch receiver, comes with the receiver from the factory and the pin. So you can run any kind of regular receiver ball you want. Anything you want to put on there or if you already got one for your truck, throw it right in there. You want to put a tow hook on there. Anything from Canadian Tire or Maynards or whatever will fit. Now, talking about suspension, up front is a standard double A arm. We don't need to talk about that. It's pretty normal. Um, but out back, let's talk about suspension. I did promise that we'd look at the uh, the piggyback shocks back here, and you can see them here. They are not a brand name. They're a CF Moto branded shock, but these are actually a really well-made. They're a good shock. They're not obviously like an Elka or something like that, but they are a really good shock, and they work really well. Um, you got your clicker up here, which is has four detents, so it's probably a five position clicker now that I think about it. And all it does is adjust compression, which is just fine, that's all you need. It's very simple to use um, and it's easy to turn. So when you get your hand up in here, you can get a good grip on it. It's not like you don't need a screwdriver or anything like that. Um, I haven't ridden this to know how it rides yet. Um, I'm hoping that on full soft, it's gonna be very, very plush and uh, maybe we'll hit some jumps with it. We'll crank it up and hit some jumps and see how that works. Also, um, the progressive rate springs are back here too, though they're a little different spring rate, obviously in the rear where you wanna carry more weight. Um, some other small notable things here, you've got this big piece of plastic. Now this is actually just a deflector. This doesn't actually, this, this isn't protecting from the cab or this isn't a piece of plastic that's the other side, like where your passenger sits. This is just a deflector to keep the dirt off of stuff that's back behind here. And I think that's really slick. I think that's a smart move to protect things. You can see the little pull pins here and that will come out, uh, but it's just a really smart move. Protect the, the stuff inside from rocks. I mean, obviously mud and water is gonna get in there, but the rocks won't smash into stuff. And, and I think that's really a cool thing to do. Now, while we're back here, I do want to talk about this rear suspension because it is, it is not your standard double A arms. This is called a double A link. And that's a weird name. Um, first glance, double A arms, because this is an A arm and this is an A arm and there's two of them. So double A arms, yes. But when you look closer down here, you'll notice that the way the hub mounts isn't a solid mount. It's actually a, a mount that could move. Look, kind of like, kind of like, don't, don't freak out, but kind of like something with four wheel steering. It has that similar mounting system that allows or would allow the hub to actually pivot side to side. And then if you look really close up here in front of the shock, there's actually a link. Um, so it would be a tow link. I mean, what is the benefit? I don't know. Uh, it's obviously going to allow you to adjust your toe so you could tune how the vehicle handles if you wanted to or or straighten it if it got tweaked or whatever. But I really don't honestly know why this is better than just a standard double A arm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look into that more, but I, I just think it's a different design. Is it better? Maybe, we'll find out when we ride it. Um, but it's certainly more complex, there's no question about that. But it is unique. And, uh, and you know, sometimes unique is better than normal, <laughs> I guess. Um, but you can see back here, your frame tubes, everything is very robust. You got really nice welds. Um, you know, even the frame tubes at the back have welded caps on them um, for a little more durability and, and just a cleaner look. Uh, CF Moto has really stepped up their quality uh, and done a great job of making their vehicles just look a lot higher quality than they have in the past. You do have a plate mount here for your license plate and it is lighted, which is kind of awesome. Ah, okay, so that's basically the vehicle from the outside. Um, but let's jump inside and have a look in here. I'll show you guys some other tricks and neat stuff that CF Moto's doing. So inside, uh, CF Moto has done a great job with this vehicle. It is a really, really nice looking, nicely finished interior. These seats have an excellent look. I love the two-tone. They're comfortable. They're, they're well bolstered, not overly bolstered, but they're well bolstered for the design of this vehicle. You gotta remember, this is a sport. This isn't like a 1,024 inch travel desert racer. This is a trail vehicle. So the seats are perfect for that. Steering wheel is really nice looking. It's a very stylistic steering wheel. Um, it's kind of plasticky. It's not rubbery, but it's not plastic. I know it's really hard, like it's soft. It's kind of 
hard to describe. It's very comfortable. It has a lot of like finger kind of indents in it and like areas where your hand just naturally grips flat on the bottom. Great looking steering wheel, um, small point, but it's important. It is a tilt steering wheel. The driver's seat adjusts, the passenger seat does not. Um, what's cool about this steering wheel though is that the gauge adjusts with it. And I'm gonna turn the key on here. The gauge is a beautiful gauge. We've said this before. We've talked about CF Motos and their gauges many times. It is a really, really nice looking gauge. It's not massive, but it's super easy to read even in the sunlight. It has all kinds of information, um, you know, stuff that you'd want to know. All of the stuff you need to know, your speed, your fuel, you know, your RPM, your gear indicator, your 4x4, engine temperature, all of that stuff is displayed here. And there are other features you can select by pushing buttons, trip meters, and all that kind of stuff. But a really, really nice looking, professional looking gauge. Um, and it tilts with the wheel. So it's always right here. It's not like up there where you're not going to be able to see it. A couple other things I want to point out here in the interior. You got a lot more buttons than you normally do. Uh, on an average side-by-side. -side. Over here, we got our headlight button, high and low beam, and then we have a drive mode button. So this engine has norm and sport. So basically just normal mode and then sport mode to adjust your throttle tip in and how the throttle feels. Coming further over here, you have a uh, hazard light flasher. Uh, I mean, really, the only people who use those sort of as racers, um, and I don't know when you'd want to use that, but it's there. Um, you have your four by four switch. We'll talk a little bit more in a minute. Horn, comes with a horn comes with hazard lights, which is cool. And then obviously if you have hazard lights, you have four lights around the vehicle. So you have turn signals too, and they're equipped with turn signals already. So anywhere that you are legally required to have turn signals to ride on the road, this comes pre-equipped that way. And that's really, really nice. Now I did want to talk about the four x four button only because it is a standard four x four system, two wheel drive, four wheel drive, four wheel drive front diff lock, but the button is upside down. Um, I, I don't know that I've ever been in a vehicle before where unlocked is at the top and fully locked is at the bottom, but that is how this works. So if you're going to jump into it and you're like, Hey, let's just go for a rip, just realize the button's upside down. So there you go. Um, shifter works actually really, really well. CF Moto's always had a really good um, transmission as far as, as shifting is concerned. And this one shifts very smoothly. Even as I'm sitting here, it's shifting through all the gears with no notchiness. Um, it's park, reverse, neutral, high and low. So it's just a standard transmission that you know goes into the CVT. Um, passenger grab handle, super nice. Doesn't rattle, lots of grip. Um, adjustable here with these compression adjusters. So that's really a nice feature. And um, a good design. I love when the passenger grab handle doesn't rattle. That just gives a high feeling of quality. Um, another neat, neat thing about this vehicle is, is the passenger footwell area has actually got angled areas for the passenger to push their feet against to brace themselves. That is super smart. That makes perfect sense because a lot of times the passenger's feet are left to be flat on the ground, but the passenger needs to brace themselves while they're riding as well. So why nobody's done this or hasn't, why not everybody does this, I don't know, but that is a really smart move that's going to benefit your passenger in a very big way. You got a little storage cubby thing up here. I'm not really sure what this would be used for, if there's an accessory that goes in here or not. Uh, obviously you can throw your goggles, or your gloves in here, but it's not going to stay there. You've got a big compartment up here, um, trunk that's very, very deep. Um, it has a weather seal on it. I, I wouldn't say that it's probably waterproof, but it is, seems to be weather sealed. And then over here, you have another storage compartment in front of the driver that's less deep. Your winch controller mounts in here. You also have two USB outlets that are in here. They're not on the dash. Um, so if you are plugging in USB accessories, they're gonna have to plug in here and then you're gonna have to route the cable out here somehow because it is also weather sealed. Uh, you do have a 12 volt outlet here, so you can put in an adapter and use 12 volt USB, whatever you want from right here also. Um, now, I'm pretty sure I've covered everything. There is accent lighting inside the vehicle that you can't see right now. The headlights are LEDs, the taillights are LEDs, and there's accent LED or accent lighting in the headlight. You know, in terms of uh, features, in terms of things that um, you would expect or you would want out of a side-by-side -side for it to be considered stylish and modern, this thing has all of it. And, and CF Moto has done a fantastic job outfitting this vehicle. And, and as I said earlier, the quality level of this vehicle is worlds above what we've seen from CF Moto in the past. Um, everything is built really nice. It looks really nice. It's finished really nice. It's not cheap. Um, it doesn't look thrown together. The welds are a huge improvement from what they've been in the past. This is just a really high quality side-by-side. -side. Now, what we got to talk about is price because that's where the rubber really hits the road, right? Is, is, is this thing a good deal though? 
And the fact of the matter is it is a really good deal. If you look at the specifications of this vehicle, I'm just gonna compare one company. I'm not gonna compare all of them. I didn't go through every model that would be competitive, but the probably the biggest, most common competitor for this would be a Razor 1000S. Uh, which is 60 inches wide, double A arms front and rear, very similar. It's a 1000, this is a 960. So, you know, very, very similar. The S model from Polaris comes in two, two models, the basic trim and the premium trim. To get the version that is competitive against this in terms of features, you have to go with the premium trim, which is $28,500 Canadian. I didn't look up the US price, I'm sorry, but it's $28,500 Canadian. This is 21 and a half. So you're saving $7,000 to buy this vehicle, which has all of the same features. In some cases, it has more features. In some cases, it has nicer build quality in certain things like the doors. So that's, that's a massive savings. That, that's like a one quarter save. It's one quarter cheaper to buy this thing. Now, this comes with a five-year limited warranty, which is better than, than the competition as well. So that's something to consider. In terms of longevity, we've had the 800 trail model for a year and put a lot of miles on it. We haven't had a single issue. It runs, it rides good, it handles good. It's never given us any issues at all. I think CF Moto has stepped up from being, you know, a, a budget sort of entry level product to being a much higher end serious offering that, that if you're shopping for any side by side, you should be looking at CF Moto very, very seriously. And if, especially if you're shopping for a 60 inch sport model, you should definitely be giving the 950 Sport a look. Not only are you saving money, but you're getting a vehicle that is well built, looks cool, has excellent features, everything you could possibly want, uh, and has a great warranty. So there you go. There is the CF Moto uh, Z Force 950 Sport. I'm impressed. Uh, we are going to have obviously a lot more information coming out when we do a test ride. That's for sure. So stay tuned for that. Before we close it off, I'm going to end by firing it up so you can hear the V-twin motor. That sounds like all other V-twin motors, but you got to hear it. So I got to do it. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you on the next one.